Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, today, whenever you're seeing this, I would like to offer the mid-September. It's kind of a mid-month check-in and it's looking at romance and relationships. So it could be a romantic relationship or it could just be a relationship in general. And how I like to do these, um, I just pick a chakra card for each of the elements and we look at the chakras, where that relationship is kind of resting at the moment in which of the primary chakras. And today I'm going to be using the fairy tarot instead of the angel tarot. Um, just something a little different. I felt guided to work with that energy instead. So, and how I like to do this is we pull or I look at the singles for each of the elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Then we look at the couples for each of those elements. And then we go to the next element. So uh, I will start in the pattern of the zodiac. I'm not quite comfortable with the zodiac yet. I'm still working on that. I know after this many years, but the zodiac, there's a lot there. And there are a lot of nuances that I'm just not familiar with yet so I'm not going to wander down that path just just for the moment but we'll start off with the energy of fire and if you have had your charts done you will find where your fire percentages are and generally you'll have dominance of one element earth air fire or water and that's kind of where your primary energy sits and that's how I look at the zodiac as I start there and then go beyond when I'm working on my own stuff but I'm not quite familiar with all of it yet so <laughs> uh, for the fire and it covers the zodiac signs of Aries Leo and Sagittarius and we'll look at the singles first we have number eight so your chakra is the play chakra and um, I'll be looking at them up, them up in their little book so that we can find out more about them Normally, I just read intuitively this deck. There's a lot going on. So uh, with the play card, though, just intuitively before I even open the book, there's a lion with an elephant. So there's a sense of humor that they're saying that could be brought forward. This is a time to really find find the funny, find the funny. Don't worry so much about, oh, well, I have to be planning, you know, six months, 10 months, two years out. They're telling you at this point for single fire, this is a time to enjoy life. Doesn't mean be risky or anything like that, but have fun. Find reasons to laugh. Find reasons to just smile at stuff because you're going to find that that is what's going to carry you forward. It's not going to be, well, I had all of these experiences, but they didn't mean much. Exactly. But you're going to remember the fun times. You're going to remember those happy periods. And that's what the energy is coming forward. So the planet that's associated with this one is Mercury, and this is your second chakra, if that's actually showing up properly. Um, and that would be your sacral chakra, the one um, just, uh, just under your belly button, basically. And it says, mythically associated with the Roman god of Mercury, the winged-footed messenger for the gods, and Buddha, interesting, in Eastern traditions. Mercury has wisdom that transcends the bounds of the mundane world and deftly juggle extremes of world duality. Known for auspicious qualities, Mercury's symbolic nature is youthful, intelligent, analytical, progressive, inventive, risk-taking, quick-witted, and communicative. So, you're kind of all that, uh, single fires. There's like a lot going on, but you have the ability to manage no matter what's happening. So you've got, you're, you're in the zone for your chakra. So that, sac that sacral chakra, the second chakra up, is really keeping you at, uh, going because your root chakra is the one that grounds you. It's your survival, your personal survival, your personal existence. The sacral is where you first start to really connect with the outside world, which is interesting that it's tied to Mercury, which is communication. Um, keywords, innovative thinking, powerful ideas, versatility, communication, adventurous opportunities, wit, playfulness, recreation, and travel. So it's really about you enjoying the life, but it's working with other people and it's finding ways to enjoy working with other people, with other beings on the planet. And 
let's see what the tarot has to say for the singles in fire for September of 2023. And there it is. Okay, so for the single fire energy, we first have the seven of winter. There is a better choice, not seeing things clearly, running away from the truth. And the two of spring, a bright future manifests through hard work and creativity, partnering with others who share your dreams, great progress is being made. The seven of winter is saying that you're choosing to not acknowledge something that's right in front of you. You're trying to choose a different path. And it doesn't always mean that choosing that other path is the best option. It's an option, but is it the best one? And the seven of winter is just telling you, really, what are you, pay attention to what you're doing right now. Yes, you're in the sacral chakra, which is a lot of fun, but there's also a lot of vice that can be tied to that as well. So it's really about staying connected with who you are at your core so that you do pick those better options. You do um, see the truth and follow that path because when you don't see things clearly, it's because you put a veil up. Oh, well, oh I can't have that. That's just not, that's that person's out of my league or that situation is just not for me. Is it? Or is that something that you've put a veil up so you're not seeing it clearly because the two of spring says otherwise. The Two of Springs says that there is a relationship, there is a connection that is coming through. The future is being manifested through hard work and creativity, partnering with people who share your dreams. But when you look at the card, it's not looking at people. It's partnering with person. So is there somebody in this connection that you may have just been ignoring or you've been like, no, they're outside of my league. I can't have that. They're too good. They're not good enough. Whatever. Don't let your ego get in the way, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but really tap into who you are and look at it because you're, there's something that you're not seeing clearly for singles in fire because there's something available for you. There is a partnership of some form um, and that could be a new friendship. It could be a work partnership. These are relationship readings, but they're really emphasizing this don't turn away from something just because it doesn't sparkle immediately. Sometimes you have to, you know, knock the dust off to see that it's what you're looking for. So we'll move on to our coupled fire energies. And this could be in a couple situation, you could be the fire dominant or it could be your partner as the fire dominant. But this is for the fire energy. For 2023 fire couples you guys are in oh you're still in the sacral chakra but you're in the challenge energy so what they're saying is what's coming going on right now is not actually a big problem for you it's something that you guys are using to grow stronger as a couple again haven't looked in the book yet um, <laughs> but with that fire energy it's the passions are rising and this card is saying there is challenges in all relationships it's how you dance through them that makes them beautiful spiritually building or destructive and this so you're whatever's going on for the fire energy right now it's really saying pay attention to the subtleties that are going on the dance steps that you need to learn Oops, we're still in. Oh, this is not the sacral. This is the first chakra. Um, as you're moving through this relationship, through this dance, if you allow those fiery passions to consume you, allowing rage, anger, fill in the blank to come forward, then that's going to literally consume and destroy. But if you dance correctly and it becomes beautiful, those passions turn into more interesting things which are better <laughs> but that is a challenge that you're working with right now so with you coupled fire signs you're actually still in the first chakra I had that wrong I apologize um, and so you're still in your root this is still in your connection to your existence to understanding more of who you are so this is a core thing for you this is foundational and it says the elephant is the center here it's or, oh, good grief. Aravata. I'm not good with Hindu. Um, the yellow square is the symbol for Earth here in the middle. Uh, in the center stands the white elephant. 
mount of sp supreme strength and celestial ascendancy. His seven trunks correspond to the seven chakras. The four cardinal points or directions, colored blood red, are inked in the four petals around the lotus. These guys here. Um, each contain a Sanskrit symbol noting a different state of consciousness, joy, natural pleasures, controlling passions, and blissful concentration. So it's really how do you dance between all of those? The control is not something you want to always exert over another person. In most cases, the most challenging way to exert control is over you, the person you look at in the mirror. So just be aware of that. Uh, keywords, defensiveness, worry, complaining, uncertainty, distraction, distress, and conflict. So for the couples, things may not be all rainbows and butterflies and unicorn farts right now, and that's fine. But how are you dancing? How are you dancing around this circle? You're dancing around the strength of your relationship. And are you using control? Are you using thoughtfulness? Are you contemplating how to support, to understand the other person? Or are you contemplating how to overpower and domineer and I will win? Usually in couples arguments, that no one's really a winner, even if one come, turns out to be uh, correct according to the facts. So that's a delicate dance that's going on for fire um, coming forward right now. So the tarot has the nine of spring, protect the fruits of your labor, prepare for challenges that lie ahead, environmental concerns. So you could be tying this relationship to your environment. That does not mean always nature. It could be your home. It could be family. It could be your work relationships. That's an environment as well. So this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, although that is how they're leading it, to, showing it to me. You also have the chariot. So whatever's going on is coming in fast and hitting hard. And it really boils down to protect the important things, the fruits of your labor. That's the important part of your life and what's going on right now. So protecting that. But that also means protecting that relationship. The thing that's coming in feels like it's just bowling you over. But it's also showing you opportunities on growth and challenges. Tapping into your root, going back to your foundational principles and practices is a way to understand and not project or become defensive and aggressive in that situation. No matter what else is happening, the only person, being very philosophical here, who can control you is you. And if you allow yourself to be taken over by passions, that doesn't always mean good. <laughs> that can be anger, rage, fury, things like that. That's where that chariot energy is just going to come bombing in and really hammer. So be wary of the chariot. Things might be moving quickly and they may feel really intense. But the really the important part is, is to make sure that you're protecting and taking care of the things that are valuable to you. And that could be the relationship. It could be people around. But really do not engage in rage. Be frustrated. That's fine. Find ways to see around it. That's the dance that is going on here. So it's, and I use the term dance because you're not, even when you watch boxing or any of those type of things, there's a structure to it. There's a dance that's going on. And that is the, in reality, that's all relationships is it's a form of dance. So you want to understand yourself. And by doing so, you can start to understand your partner the person who you're dancing with and when you do that you'll start to see maybe there's a different way maybe because of anger because of that fiery energy that's coming up you're not seeing things as clear as you could so for the couples just keep your keep your eyes and your heart open and see see a way around the situation so that you're not going at each other and like i said that could be in a romantic relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be a business working relationship as well. So let's cut our little deck here, preparing us for earth energy. And earth covers the zodiac signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So if that is you, um, and we'll start with the singles again, then this is your mid-month uh, relationship and possible romance reading. 
So Earth Singles. Oh, that did not get shuffled. <laughs> Earth Singles are definitely more grounded than the fiery temper that was floating around beforehand. Fire is very intense and can be very challenging, but it can also be very enlightening and invigorating. So fire is interesting. The earth tends to be more stable, more grounded, but they can also become a little bit stuck in the mud singles. And you guys are starting off with the root chakra, which is strength. So your strength is the foundational aspect of your existence. It doesn't always mean that you have to be the biggest and the baddest. Sometimes that strength is that quiet strength. It's that ability to walk into a room and say no. Just quietly say no and everyone in that room pays attention to you immediately because that's your strength. You know what you know and that therein lies that knowledge that's coming up. So let's see what our little book here has to say. No, not that one. There. Um, the strength on here is actually Mars, so you're tapping into some fiery masculine energy for the month of September. Although Mars is sometimes known as the Warring God, he personifies the power to direct energy towards winning battles between wisdom and ego. Exalted on Earth for surmounting obstacles and fearlessly fulfilling the duties, he embodies the discipline and knowledge needed to evolve from lower to higher in the chakra field. So you're working with an energy that is setting you up for success, but it's also projecting you f up, not just forward. You're actually you know, working on the ascending process here. Uh, keywords, focused will, finding your strength, resilience, action, processing truth, deep-rooted commitment. So for the singles, it's a good idea this month to really examine where your strengths lie, how they set up your life, but also if you're working especially with uh, spiritual topics, you're working on that ascension practices, this would be an amazing month to tap into that and working with the Mars energy, some of that divine masculine energy so that you really find the balance to life. Uh, and it allows you to, you have a firm foundation, it allows you to build upwards easier. So you're tapping into that divine masculine, you're tapping into that Mars energy, and a little bit of fire, so you're building a little bit of passion into your projects here. But that's a good place to start for single earth. And, there we go, your tarot is... The first one is the world, a brilliant success, the freedom to go in any direction, and a journey that is now complete. And the second card is the princess of winter, inquisitive, truthful, realistic, unpro undiplomatic, uh -oh. uh, information that can be helpful but which may also be difficult to hear, speaking truth with kindness, an indigo child or adult. So. You're building your foundation and what this is saying is you're being offered the world. You've completed a whole bunch of work and now it's you're resetting. That's not a bad thing. It's you're coming back, uh, single earths, to the foundation, the core principles. It could be that you just got out of a relationship and so you're having to kind of uh, reset a little bit. Or it could be the fact that you have finally laid a foundation that you're ready to step forward. Or it could be just that you have made the decision because you've set the foundation that relationships aren't right. You're not ready for that yet. And that's fine. But you've made the decision. You've completed that cycle. And by doing so, you've opened a door to something amazing, really. So you've got this very positive flowing energy coming up. But it's also saying that you've done the work. Now it's time to enjoy the reward. And you've got the princess of winter. The thing with the Wind Princess of Winter is she speaks what is. It don't matter to her if it's polite, if it's politically correct, if it might hurt your feelers. That's not what she's here to do. Yes, you've done the work. You have a great deal of things that are opening up for you. You're stable where you're at, and that's a reward in itself. But she's also calling you out. What is it? Think about this for a second, Earth. What is it that you have told yourself, oh, I don't need? But back on that back burner, you know, a little spot right behind your ear where it's like, ah, but I really want it. I really want it. No, I can't have it. No, I'm, I'm not supposed to have it. The Princess of Winter is saying, why are you hiding from yourself? Why 
are you trying to deny who, what, etc. you are? But she's doing it in a way that is showing you your core. She's holding up a mirror, but that mirror doesn't show this, this thing here, this face stuff. She's showing you your soul, the part underneath. And she's calling that part forward saying, what are you doing? Why are you hiding? Step up, step out. So your strength is going to be possibly tested, uh, Earth singles, because you have completed that cycle, but you're also being called to be honest with yourself. Just because you've done a lot of the work and you feel stable, does that mean that you've been fully honest with yourself? In a lot of cases you are, but you can always go a little bit deeper and find out talking to your inner child, your higher self, things like that, you'll start to understand a little bit more of maybe some of those uncomfortable truths you didn't want to look at. But that's what the Princess of Winter is going to do is call you out. And she has a beautiful white um, snow leopard, sorry. And that's just showing her or showing you her strength. So you have a lot of strength going on. You're in your root chakra, so this is your your foundation. But she's saying there's other there's other ways to uh, you know <laughs> deal with these situations. So um, we'll move on here to the Earth couples. So and that's this could be you being the dominant Earth sign the Taurus Virgo or Capricorn or it could be for your partner being the Taurus Virgo Capricorn earth dominant uh, and it could also be in your chart even if you're a different sign uh, generally you have two very dominant elements and this could be how you read that too um, for me I believe it's water and water and earth I believe or no water and air um, fires like I have zero fire <laughs> um, which is actually kind of ironic but yeah earth is not one of my higher ones I don't believe I think it's water and air but we will look at earth couples today with the right action right off the bat the energy that's coming forward is you have a lot going on and there's as a couple you're not just the two of you there's a third party involved they're saying but this per person this third party is not active in the relationship but they are supporting it um, and it, this is an, also a reminder to do the right thing in your relationships to do what is best for the relationship whether that's romantic uh, friendship business you're doing the right thing for the relationship and that also means being honest truthful and upfront about things um, Decep they're, they're giving me the message that deception is the worst thing you could possibly be involved in right now. So, let's see what the third chakra. So you guys are in your uh, solar plexus, your power chakras. And it's the, oh good grief, Gayatri Ma. This goddess is the physical form of Gayatri Man Mantra that bears her name, which dates back to the Rig Veda. She symbolizes the feminine power of strength, compassion, kindness, healing, knowledge, and purity. She is said to preside over Homa, the sacred fire, and to have given the four Vedas to humanity. So you have a very powerful goddess, triple-faced goddess, of course, so you've got a lot of divine feminine energy coming forward as well. And keywords, truth, purity, being real, activating will, harnessing your sense of negativity, shadow acceptance. There's a challenge. Uh, dharma acting according to duties so the right action is even if you don't want to because dharma harnessing your shadow when you harness your shadow you're actually leashing your ego which needs to happen the ego does not need to be killed you can't kill it that's part of you but it can be reined in it can be put under you know a form of control because the ego running rampant is where the problems come in and you've got these this triple goddess aspect coming in saying let us help you tame that let us help you understand what right action means what it means to do the right thing the Dharma is um, karma is the spiritual result of action Dharma is preventing it so to speak <laughs> and that's not an exact interpretation don't come for me that is how I've been seeing it with this situation this reading these are the actions that 
heal the karma or deal with it. This is the physical world. These are the rituals. These are the um, buying the flowers for your partner, cooking dinner for your partner, um, buying donuts at the office or veggie tray or whatever it is your office does. <laughs> but this is that giving aspect of the earth energy. And that's what she's bringing forward is how do you work in this? And you're dealing with your power. So this is your power center. How do you deal with that? Do you let it just run rampant and you just run over the top of people? Or are you more controlled with it where you're supporting building and you're using that power as a with duty and honor to build others up? So uh, on to the tarot. <laughs> we have the five of autumn. Reach out to others for assistance. Poor timing for career changes. Feeling challenged by money issues. So this is not a time to make big world decisions. This is a time to really focus on what's important. Use your power, use your duties to support and build and grow what you already have. Don't jump into anything too quickly or jump out of anything too quickly. This is really a time to say, take the pause, examine where your power sits and what's going on with it before you make any decisions. The other card that came out is the seven of summer. No more procrastinating. Your power comes from making decisions, confusion that arises from overanalyzing. So you've got a little bit of conflicting energy here. In the first part you have, take a breath, make sure you're doing the right thing. You're working with the goddess that's going to help you understand that. But the seven of summer is saying, don't overanalyze it. Don't overthink. So the contrary aspect of this is you have this take a breath take a pause it doesn't say stop though it says be careful before you take those next steps the seven of summer is but don't get lost in worrying about it make your decision make your plan then move forward with conscious directed action so it's not saying not to do anything and it's not saying rush into stuff you have this combined energy of take your time Take a breath, analyze what's going on. Don't make drastic life changes right now, but don't stop moving and don't forget that those once you make the decisions, you have to move on them. <laughs> so you've got a little bit of a dynamic going on and in a relationship aspect, this is not a time to try to change, alter or rearrange how you have your life set up. That could be a, a romantic friendship or per, uh, business. Because the seven of summer is going to be pushing you. So you have this urge, like you have to change something right now. Take your time. It's not like you've got, you've got a lifetime. You don't have to do everything all at once. So there's, there's a balance that goes on. And that's that push pull of understanding your shadow, working with that shadow, reigning in the ego so that it's not running rampant over the rest of your life. So let's hop over to get my deck here to cut again we will cut the deck for the month or for month good grief the elemental energy of air and we'll start off with the air singles air covers the energy or the zodiac of gemini libra and aquarius so if you're gemini libra or aquarius as a single air energy this is your little message and we have service. Um, they're showing that this means things that are charitable or doing favors, something to help others, doing things without expectation of return. Sometimes just doing things for others is the benefit. Um, 25, where is we at? Do, 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 do. So you're in the heart chakra. So this is doing things out of compassion for others. That does not mean pity. That does not mean doing it because you think it'll look good on social media. Matter of fact, don't tell anyone that you did it. Um, <laughs> that's the best form of service we can work on here. So we have uh, Ram. So this is one of the primary deities. Ram, a favorite in the Hindu spiritual tradition, is the seventh incarnation of Vishnu, the preserver. In Ramayana epic, he destroys the demon king Ravana, saves the inhabitants of earth from destruction, he marries the beautiful Sita, an incarnation of Lakshmi, and follows the heroic path of duty and service. But he doesn't talk about it. He just does and moves on. Uh, keywords, selfless service, listening to your heart, 
being unaffected by others' opinions, strengthening your yogic discipline or spiritual practices, seeking passage to the higher chakras. The heart chakra is the balancing chakra. You have three below, dealing with the everyday world, your, your existence, uh, your connection to others, and your ability to wield power within that world. The heart balances that with the lighter etheric energies of communication, um, psychic clairs, etc., and your spiritual connection. When you're working with um, that type of energy, the reason they say yoga is it teaches you balance. Um, and you can use yoga, tai chi, qigong, any of those three particularly. They are forms of moving meditation. So that is going to help you readdress and rebalance. Um, being this is more based on Hindu tradition, they do say yoga, but the other ones work for the same purposes. Um, but single air, you're working out of your heart, and that means, but doing so selflessly means you're not expecting anything to return. You're not telling people about it. You're not in the age of, I just donated food to the homeless shelter. I just spent six hours, blah, blah, blah. No, don't do that. When you're working this single um, air energy for the month of September, do so quietly. You did it. You came home, told no one. Not even your friends, just don't tell anybody. If they're asking, oh, we're going to go out and go, you know, fill in the blank. Even if you've already made the plan to go do this service of some form, oh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not up for that tonight. You don't have to tell them why. The selfless service, that service to others should be done from a point of compassion. You want to be helpful and beneficial, but you're not doing it from a point of pity where I guess I have to take care of you. It's such a shame what happened. Don't do that. And it's not from the point of, oh, I'm doing this, look at how good I am. Don't tell anybody. But that's the service that's coming forward. Heart-centered service is done out of compassion for your other living beings on this planet. And that can be like walking dogs for the local uh, animal shelter too. So it's not just for other people, but you're doing it without looking for accolades and you're not doing it because poor, poor person. So... Just keep that in mind as you're working through this little section. Um, you have the world coming up as your first tarot card. So you've got, you have a lot available to you. You're in a good position, single heir, because you are willing and open to doing things. And that is great because that gives you the opportunity to offer that service without having to worry about, am I, are my bills paid? Am I doing the right thing with my um, rent, my auto payment, whatever it is, you're set up to be able to offer this service at this time. You have the three of winter saying, reaching out to others for comfort and love. You will go stronger from the situation, sadness that heals. When you offer selfless service, it actually does do some inner healing and some inner work. You're doing something without thought of return. And when you do that, you actually open your heart up even more to those experiences and those connections. And I say connection as in the emotional responses. There's been times where you'll go, um, for me personally anyway, I've went and shoveled people's walks when I was younger. Never would tell them that I did it. Got caught a couple of times and their response was so shocking because they were like, well, how much do I owe you? there isn't any I'm not charging this is just something I wanted to help out with and their response is so amazing but it opens your heart up it doesn't matter what else is going on it opens you you up by offering that and that's the important part of selfless service is you're doing it for them but there is actually an interesting little side benefit that pops back because you feel good inside even if they don't catch you even if they no one else knows about it you know there's a difference and that little subtle difference changes your vibration so let's look at air couples and this could be you as the air gemini libra aquarius or your partner as the air of gemini libra or aquarius or if air's in the top two of your zodiac charts so we have for air couples intuition and this is Connecting on a spiritual level, understanding what the other person needs without verbalizing, without have them really saying anything about it. Your intuition is what's the guiding force in a surprisingly high amount of connections as humanity. We just choose to ignore it because we've been taught it doesn't exist. Um, spoiler alert, it does. So, 
we're working with the sixth chakra and the deity on the front is the mother earth all life springs from her womb she efforts effortlessly pours her love into every one through gifts of nature that only the unselfish mother can provide from the roots of the trees tree of life and to the tips of its fruiting branches she offers universal nourishment to all through her gifts life is sustained the journey of awakening flows in the compassionate ocean of love so for the couples oops this is really about tapping into the roots and growing your relationships again friendship you know, romantic or uh, business and you're doing so from the point of your intuitive acts uh, abilities but you're doing it also with this energy of compassion which is interesting considering the air, uh, air singles had a real focus on compassion but your uh, Gaia mother earth however you want to look at her she is the one that supports so you're working from an aspect of divine femininity as your support base for this next little period of time and when you have that foundation you have the roots that go down you're reaching you, the relationship is reaching up as well you have a strong foundation to work from and you're building something that's beautiful it's being fruitful and that is part of that intuitive aspect is knowing how to support your partner how you're knowing your part that your partner knowing how to support you and that allows that growth to really expand and grow up as well as down so that you're stable as you're growing up you have the empress uh, take time to take action the power of creativity success that allows for a life of luxury it is a very fruitful time for you things are moving very well there's not a lot of drama so to speak at this moment again you're really tapping more into that divine feminine so you're bringing a balancing nature of compassion and consideration um, and you're also in a state where you can give but also receive you also have the princess of winter so there's something that you're not wanting to admit here uh, information that can help but help you but which may be difficult to hear speaking truth with kindness indigo child indigo children are notoriously known for their intuitive abilities their ability to see a lie before you've actually finished speaking it so your intuition is what's guiding you and that could be you or your partner business personal friendship is part of that indigo aspect that person is not going to let you be deceitful uh, and they're gonna call you out and they're gonna do it in a way that is polite at first but if you're not paying attention they might get a little more rough about how they comes across or you might have to get a little bit more rough depending on where it sounds um, but in the relationship aspect the divine feminine you have a receptive energy that's coming forward but it's also a very fruitful energy you have this this is a time of ease but it's also a time of the rewards are coming in which is amazing and you're working with that feminine energy but there's something that you're just missing there's something that you're not quite willing to see maybe at this point in time but it's really the time to acknowledge it this is the you're in let's just hold all these up here you're in the space to acknowledge that situation peacefully quietly and safely so if there's things that you're not really understanding or you're not sure how to address in your relationship this is the time but tapping into that princess of winter that fairy from I mean she's just a little fairy delicate wings but tapping into that and doing it with stealth and quiet gentility is a way to deal with those situations but they're not saying it's a negative situation they're just saying that you're not acknowledging this one aspect so that's something to be looking at for the couples um, and it doesn't again it's not they're not saying that it's negative they're just saying that there's an aspect of life that you are choosing to ignore and she's saying the time for that is over step it up fix the problem move on and or you know heal the situation however that sh shows up so now we'll move over to water singles water covers the signs of cancer Scorpio and Pisces and water is the emotional uh, energy of the zo of the elements and also the zodiac for that matter um, and I read like I do because 
Fire starts the zodiac with Aries, water ends it with Pisces, and the cycle that I read follows that. So, you are, for water singles, time to let some stuff go. Unburden yourself, release your past, release those burdens that you've been carrying, especially those emotional ones from past situations. Doesn't mean really, really have to be relationships, but it could be. You're single and it's time to act like it. <laughs> Instead of carrying around all this burden from the past of people, places, situations that were not the most beneficial for you, it's time to let it go. Listen to that song off that Frozen movie. <laughs> um, the third chakra. So we're tied to your um, so your solar plexus. So this is your, a power thing for you. And the deity on here is Rudra, often shown as an old man with white hair and long beard. Shiva Rudra, who is the most ancient, in the most ancient eras of Indian mythology, was known simply as Rudra, is the oldest of the three incarnations of Shiva, the divine masculine. Rudra, shown on this card, destroys that which has become corrupt, dishonest, or dysfunctional. It clears the way for new creations. Linked with the fear of change, death, destruction of ego, crying, this god can be very frightening. Mightiest of the mighty, he can remove anger and help us understand our own karma and consequences for us and others. So, definitely time to clean out the emotional storage room water energy. It says keywords decay, damage, fear, the need to change, purpose, bleh, purposeful destruction, beneficial endings, release. I don't know what else to add to that. <laughs> uh, but they're really saying clean the skeletons out of your closet. You're carrying around baggage. That's interesting. They just showed me 10 years. So you're carrying around 10 years worth of baggage. Whatever's happened in the last 10 years, especially has been the uh, focus let it go it doesn't matter what it is school personal old relationships you're carrying it around and it's not healthy it's not beneficial for you they're saying it is time to release that you have so much open to you you're in your power center your solar plexus chakra is your ability to be in this world and you know teach grow uh, your uh, your connection to your power and, but you're restricting it because you have all this gunk piled up on top of your shoulders. It's doubling you over. It's the anxiety. It's the depression. It's that frustration. It's that fear of moving forward again because you might, might get hurt. Don't get me wrong. We all have these demons. We all have this stuff we have to work through. But in September, it's really saying with Shiva Rudra, it's time for water to clean house. So single waters, and it could be something as simple as deleting some of those text messages, deleting those emails. If there's pictures that are valuable to them, you cut that, cut the part that's not beneficial out and keep the picture. There's no harm in that. Uh, replace it with a cat. <laughs> you have the eight of autumn. Do more research before proceeding. Education in the form of seminars, going back to school, apprenticeships craftsmanship and long-term projects this is a time for that new creative aspect you've been looking at something you've been wanting to try something it could be an energy work it could be spiritual it could be picking up a couple of knitting needles and starting to knit the eight of autumn is saying as clean stuff out get the stuff out of your way that's not beneficial anymore burn it away so that you can allow the eight of autumn the new stuff to come in furthering your education if that was part of what was holding you back before or trying something new a new because to be honest with you arts and crafts of a various forms are extremely relaxing but they can also turn into something that triggers your creativity and brings you back to that youthful aspect so you have a lot of that energy coming up and again, apparently the Princess of Winter is saying, quit hiding. She's shown up almost every one of these readings. I shuffle, I cut the deck. But, <laughs> and so you've got this very positive aspect coming forward saying, it's time to get back into things. It's time to start this creative push. But the Princess of Winter is saying, why are you hiding? She's calling you out because of this. <laughs> the stuff that you're not letting go of, the stuff that you're hiding, the stuff that you have been toting around for the last 10 years, she's saying, let it go. And yes, that sometimes means peeling band-aids off. But if you rip them off quickly, the pain's there. It's gone. 
dragging it out makes that pain hang out forever. And that's what Shiva Rudra is saying is, you've paid your penance, let it go. It might be scary to release some of this heavier energy, but it's time, water singles. This is your permission, I guess you could say, to let go of that stuff that you've been carrying around for so long. So let's reshuffle our little deck here and take a peek at water couples or those in relationships, personal, um, professional, intimate, however it works. So, and this could, like I said before, the other signs, this could be for, um, water can be the main person, you who's hearing this right now, Cancer Scorpio Pisces, or it could be for the partner, Cancer, Cancer Scorpio Pisces, or if water is dominant in either one of your charts, this is the time to, or this reading is for you. Um, we are now in the radiance aspect, number 16 before I open the book, they're saying that this is your time to shine as couples, as in the relationship. There's always a balance of one's shining and then the other's shining and one's shining. And this is, they're saying that this is for both of you, whether you're both water or not, this is the couple's time to shine. This is you guys stepping into your power as a couple. Again, you're in the third chakra. So this is about power. It's your solar plexus. So this is your connection with each other and how it radiates. Um, there's, before I read anything, they're showing me that this is you being a good, good example for others, a good example of what a relationship can, can be. Yes, you'll have your ups and downs. Yes, there may be bickering, but it's how you handle yourselves and you show the support for each other. And that is that listening. You have two of these and one of these. Listen more than you talk. Um, <laughs> but you're listening from the state of compassion and love for that other person. And they're showing that that is the best option. If it is a uh, friendship or a, a business relationship, again, this is that the connection, the relationship aspect is what is coming up as the shining part. This is the example for others. So let's look at radiance. Um, the elemental energy is fire, which is your polar opposites water, just so we're aware. Um, <laughs> the fire symbolizes the spark of inspiration that can arouse the imagination to music, dance, and grow beyond the tethers of restrictions. Although it is heat, it heat, yeah, I am really struggling to talk today. Uh, <laughs> Although its heat can be friend or foe, fire can burn through obstacles to enable people to become the best versions of themselves that they can be. On the other hand, it can also serve as fuel for the ego, making people feel entitled, arrogant, or dominant. So there is the warning to be careful to not let your ego get in the way, but keywords, excitement, intensity, activity, actively jumping towards possibilities, sparks flying to create relations, relations, the will to fulfill ambitions and being assertive. So there's the cautionary part of even though your the relationship can be a shining beacon, don't let that go to your head thinking that you're always perfect. Like I said, you're showing the reality of the relationship. It's that back and forth where one person is right, one person is wrong, but you you're okay with that. It's that, yes, we have our disagreements over stupid things, where to eat, where to do, how, who's doing laundry, what temperature do laundry at, you know, you got the wrong kind of dish soap, you know, those are the, the issues, but you're showing the radiance that they keep bringing up is the fact that you're showing how it's best to function. And you might even realize that you're demonstrating that they're also making that really clear that this is not a conscious thing for you. If your ego gets involved, it becomes conscious. That's the negative aspect. But the reality is other people, other couples, sometimes singles are watching you water couples saying, I want that. That's what I, that's what I want. They're not faking it. They're being real with all of its interestingly, interestingness. Um, and yes, that's a new word, but they're really wanting to emphasize that the brilliance, the radiance that you're showing can burn you, but it's also a great representation right now. To the tarot, the four of autumn, manage your resources wisely, achieving a balance in how you spend and save money, helping those who are less fortunate. Again, as I said earlier with the other um, energy, this is not about showing off 
what you can do. This isn't about, oh, I put this big check in the offering plate at the church. Don't do that. This is not about posting on social media, I just watched six dogs for the animal shelter, or I just donated five hours at the, ho at the soup kitchen. When you're helping out others, you're doing it from a state of compassion. You're not doing it to show off. And that's what the Four of Autumn is saying is you're managing your resources and the stuff that you have extra of. You're helping others out. You're donating your time, money. Um, maybe you've cleaned out that closet, discovered you had you know, 17 dresses you don't wear anymore. Things like that that can be beneficial to others, but you're doing it out of generosity instead of uh, the ego aspect of it. But you also have the aid of autumn, doing more research before proceeding, educating in education in the form of seminars, going to school, apprenticeships, craftsmanship, and long-term projects. You're clearing things out. You're also thinking about what your next steps are because you have new energies coming in. You have new knowledge, new interests that are coming forward. The uh, element, the energy of autumn is earth so you're working with hearth and home with this energy so it's really again you're being the representative you're being the person showing what that radiant relationship can look like and you're doing so in ways of being generous with your time and skills or talents that you have but you're also working on creating new stuff you've got new interests maybe as individuals, but also as the couple to grow and build that's coming in for this next um, cycle. So yeah, that's all they're going to give me. <laughs> um, hopefully these messages resonate for you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like on the video, hit the subscribe button. If you're new here, comment down below. Um, as long as they're respectful, I, I even will. <laughs> I actually like seeing the uh, constructive criticism. How can I do better? So uh, again, just be respectful. That's all I ask for. With that, I will see you in the next video. Have a great rest of September and enjoy your relationships.